Okay, so in today's video, I want to show you how to redefine the characters on the VIC-20 to whatever you want them to be. So, let's get right into it. So the VIC-20's video chip, which is the VIC chip for video interface chip, that's where the computer got its name. And uh, yeah, it does not have any graphics modes, technically. It can only really display text characters. So how do you create custom graphics on the Commodore VIC-20? Well, you can easily redefine those characters and change what they look like. You can almost think of the graphics more as like tile-based graphics, and we could just create a custom tile set. So let's make a custom character. Okay, so let's draw our custom character. Uh, I've got an 8x8 grid here. That's what the characters are. They're 8x8 eight eight pixels. And I'm just going to draw a little smiley face. Okay, so uh, it's not quite a smile. It's more of just a face. A neutral face. So how are we going to convert this into computer data? Well, as you can see across the top here, for each column of pixels, I've got 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. We're going to go one row at a time and we're going to uh, basically go through the row and add the number corresponding to the column if the column is filled in. So for example, top row would be 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 or 255 minus 128 minus 1 which equals 126 so we'll go 126 for this row the next row will be 1 plus 128 so that would be 129 uh, same for the next row and the row after that will be 1 plus 4 which is 5 plus 32 which is 37 plus 128 which is 165 so there we go we've got all our values there we're basically just looking at each row as a binary number okay so here's a little basic program that redefines the a character to the uh, custom character we just created i know it's a bit hard to read with the uh, limited screen dimensions of the vic 20 so here's a printout and i'm just going to walk you through the code Okay, so 10, poke 52 with 28, then poke 56 with 28, and then CLR. This basically just reserves an area in memory for our character set so that uh, basic doesn't interfere with it. And then CLR just clears all variables, and it will clear any variables that might potentially be in our character set area. CLR really isn't all that necessary though. These next three lines really aren't all that necessary either. These are for just if you want to like have a mix of the default characters with like a few of your own custom characters thrown in there. Or x equals 0 to 511 and then poke 7168 plus x with peak 32768 plus x and then 40 next x. What this loop does is it copies the data from the uh, read only memory in ROM where the characters are stored and copies the default character set into the area of memory where we're having our custom character set live. And then 50 for x equals 0 to 7, and 60 read a, which reads the uh, data from line 90, and then colon poke 7176 plus x with that value. This is going to uh, poke the data from line 90 into where the a character is stored. Our custom character set starts at 7168, but we're gonna start poking this data in at 7176, since that's where the A character story, which is character one, since character zero is just an at sign and it's harder to type. And then finally 80, poke 36869 with 255. What 36869 does is it's a register on the VIC chip that basically tells the VIC chip where to look for the character data. And by default it's set to 240, but we're gonna set it to 255, which moves it all the way down to the area in the computer's RAM where our custom character set is. And then line 90 is just data and then these numbers from earlier. And now let's run our code. And it uh, takes a second to do its thing. And now all the A's have been replaced with this little face. As you can see when we type an A, it also displays it. 
So now let's move on to multicolor. In multicolor mode, the character's horizontal resolution is cut in half. So now it's 4x8 pixels. And instead of one bit representing each pixel, like in the single color, there's two bits representing each pixel. So 00, zero is basically you can see through the background. 01 will mean it'll be the same color as the border. 10 will make that pixel whatever the character color is. 1 1 will make it the auxiliary color. All of the colors except for the character color are global for the whole screen character color can be controlled on a per character basis by writing to character memory. The VIC-20 has 16 colors. The screen color can be any of those colors. The border color can only be one of the first eight colors. And the character color can only be one of the first eight colors in single color mode, but in multicolor mode it can be any of the 16. And the auxiliary color can be any of the 16. To enter multicolor mode, we can go poke. 646 six, and then any value higher than 8 or we can just do 8 which will be multicolor with the character color black 646 six, comma 9 comma. that'll be multicolor with the character color red as you can see the text is all garbled that's because the character data is designed for single color mode not multicolor so it'll look kind of weird Got a bit of the border in the background mixed in there. And 646 is what controls the character color for the text that you put on the screen. To exit out, we can just change the color manually by hitting control and then a number key, the way you normally would. As you can see, we are now out of multicolor mode. You can also just poke directly to screen RAM. And there we go, the very top uh, left-hand character has been changed to multicolor. So basically just setting the fourth bit in each color cell to high will enable multicolor mode. Okay, so here's another little program. It's similar to the last one, except it redefines multiple characters to make it even bigger smiley face. And it's in multicolor mode. Uh, a couple things to note here is instead of copying the ROM character set into RAM, I'm just initializing that area memory to zero. And line 90 is where I'm setting it to multicolor with the character colors uh, yellow. So now let's run this program. I changed the character set pointer right away so you can see the characters being redefined in real time. And there we go. Uh, something interesting we can do is if we hit control 9 to turn on reverse mode, we can actually type normally and see the regular character set. It doesn't use our redefined character set, it just wraps back around to the ROM. Several of these colors are global, so if we change the border color, it should change all the areas that are black on our little face. So let's change the border to blue. As you can see, certain parts of the face that were set to border color have been changed to blue. But the yellow parts can be changed individually because they're the character color and the character color can be changed on a per character cell basis. So what I've done here is I've changed the cursor color to black and then I'm just typing over the face. So anyway, that's just about it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.